Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of almost all ages, with parental consent. The Sick Twisted Minds at Sacrificial Pond Productions brings you a new style of horror film, like nothing you have seen before. There are no cops, no investigations. There is no backstory, no follow-up of the victims who are brutally tortured and murdered. Our story isn't about them. Normal terror is about a single dad struggling to make ends meet. His son is his first priority. He goes to work, pays his bills, and is generally a great dad. The twist comes after he puts his son to bed. This is where he releases his stress. Some people do yoga, some hit the gym, some go for runs, some people paint on a canvas. An anonymous source once wrote on an abandoned asylum wall, I never understood people until I took one apart just to see how it worked. If you are rear-ended in traffic, most people's thought runs to anger and their primal instincts of hurting the other party. Sam Neill does not have the ability to stop that primal instinct. Let us take you into the mind of a killer. Normal Terror is a concept from the mind of Sam Mason, who wrote, directed, produced, and is starring in this new age feature film. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen. I have my guest, my friend Matt Cantor on here again. Matt, what's up? Not much, brother. What's going on? Just chilling. We're doing a little random horror movie thing. Just a random horror chat. We're going to just name a couple movies off. I have my computer pulled up. Talk about what we think, you know, what we're expecting from the movie, what we're hoping from the movies, and just have a little have a little fun with it and, you know, go from there. So, uh upcoming movies well i'll say one that came out already that i have seen did you see a quiet place yet uh no i have not you have not okay i will not spoil that for you (laughs) i will just tell you that uh interesting watch i felt it was overhyped with the internet stuff which i know 100 percent that i know better than to listen to the internet when it comes to movies and um that's really all I can say without... Sp- I don't want to spoil it for you, so I will not say anything else about that movie. But an upcoming movie... Did you see... Um, or not did you see... Upcoming movie, The Nun. I'm looking forward to seeing that based off the... Con- no, the Insidious, mo- Insidious no, no, no. franchise. No, no, no. You were right the first time. with the con- It was from The con- oh, she was was in the Conjuring Part 2. Yeah, because... The franchise is mixed up. Yeah, because she was... <laughs> um, she was in the basement, I believe, under the water... I think yes. it was the first time you seen it. in England there in part two. Yep. And I'm really looking forward to this movie. I met that lady in person, by the way. She's so freaking nice. Got oh, her cool. autograph and everything. And the old man that was in the chair. Both of them were awesome. But I'm really looking forward to this movie. Um, I just want to – I don't know where they're going to go with it. Like, I'm not even reading the synapses of it. I'm not looking for trailers. I'm just going off of my mind. <laughs> like, I don't know where they're going right. to go with it. But I just, I hope they can tie it into the franchise good. I hope it's not, I mean, I obviously they're doing it for the money, but I hope it's not just like throwing it out there as like a money maker and it's a garbage movie. Annabelle. <coughs> Excuse me. Which one? The first one or the creation? The first one. The, the first, first one? one was bad. That was just like a money maker right there. But I heard the second one was actually pretty good. I seen, yeah, I'd, I'd seen the second one. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. I don't remember the first one too well. I seen the second one more recently. It wasn't, it really wasn't bad at all. I just I would, picked up the second one, so I got to watch it. Yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely check cool. it out. And um, yeah. you have anything to say about the nun that you're kind of like expecting? I, ho- I hope they make a freaking scary as hell. Mm-hmm. I love the con. I love the the Conjuring films. I'll, I actually enjoy watching. They got that very good creepiness vibe to it, and that nun is definitely pretty freaking freaky. Yes, she is. 
No, there's already a horror movie called The Nun uh, from the early 2000s, which was actually not bad. It's a British film. So um, hopefully they don't go the way they went with that movie and go completely different with this one. Mm-hmm. But who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see with that. And then another movie that's coming out, um, let's see, Slender Man. I guess that's finally coming out. I don't know too much of the story. I know the kids used to watch stuff online with the whole Slender Man thing. Mm-hmm. But um, this movie, I'm not expecting too much from it. I would, I will watch it, but I'm not really expecting like a spectacular, amazing like. I have I to go won't see go it. To the theaters to yeah, see I was it. gonna say this will be one of those movies. I, I don't, I won't have to rush out there to go see like the Nun. I want to see that in theaters. This movie, not so much. You got anything to say about it, or? Uh, I saw the trailer. I wasn't really drawn to it. Uh-huh. So, so I'll just have to wait. Like again, I probably won't see it in the theaters. I'll probably wait till it comes out. It's a long time. See what the hype is all about on it. I don't know. It's just it was a whole internet creation of the Slender Man thing. I think they're just trying to. I don't. Know, it sounds like a money grab to me. Okay. But we'll see. Maybe it'll be good. I don't know. You never. Yeah, I was gonna say you never know. Uh, I don't know if you have any movies that you can think of off the top. But another see, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, if, did you see the uh, the last Insidious movie, Insidious Four: The Last Key? I seen most of it. I did. I did fall asleep, and it wasn't because it was a boring movie. It's just like, and my wife can definitely agree to this. If I'm laying down watching a movie, comfortable. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> more than likely, I'm gonna fall asleep, and that's with any movie for the most part. It doesn't matter how good or how bad the movie is. I'm just, I fall asleep, but. From what I've seen, it was a really good movie. I liked it. I, th- I thought uh, the franchise in a whole is actually really well done. Yes. I was surprised. Usually by the third movie or fourth movie, you're starting to go downhill. <clears throat> but no, this one was actually pretty solid. Yeah, they, they really did hold the franchise together as a whole. And I will tell you this, Insidious Chapter 3, remember the end where the, you see the guy with the, the, um, the red face with the black markings? Whatever. Mm-hmm. When that face popped up, we made a lot of fun to see this in theaters. That was actually, I jumped at that part. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting, and usually I do not jump at movies. I'm the one who's just sitting there watching and laughing, but I was just like, oh, shit. Same. And hey, I, so I, my hat's off to that because it made me jump. I like when a movie can actually make me jump when I'm not expecting something because it's just, you know, it's it's very rare with me nowadays. Like, hmm and I'm not, it's like you're just, you're used to it, or you just, you always just kind of know, like, and it doesn't even make it a bad movie when you know something like that's going to happen. You just kind of know just from watching the different types of horror movies, like, okay, well, they're playing this crazy music, now it got quiet, and they're just looking, looking, looking with a little flashlight, boom, you're going to see a face type of deal. Yep, it's not going to happen now, but it's going to happen there. The, the jump scares are always the dime a dozen. Mm-hmm. And you know it's coming. It's like, okay, you got that eerie music. The lady's staring in a mirror, or she's looking at one way, or <clears throat> you just know it's coming. So you prep yourself. You know it's going to happen. The mirror. All of a sudden, oh, boom, you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Yep. The mirror ones are so freaking like. <laughs> they're funny because it's, it's almost always the same. Someone's opening the medicine cabinet to look for something. Yeah. They oh, hear sorry. something. Yeah. They might hear something behind them. There's nothing there. They close the mirror. For some reason, they, you know, the camera pans away from the mirror. Then it goes back to the mirror. Then boom, you see a face, and there's like a, like a high pitched kind of music sound, like bing. Yep. And boom, the person jumps and fucking knocks a bunch of shit over. Never picks it up. <laughs> and runs out they don't, the bathroom. They don't run. <laughs> I'm just uh, like shit. It's like a dime a dozen. But there's one movie I can't wait. I'm definitely going to theaters to see it. It comes out in August, and that is the Meg, with oh, uh, Jason Statham. The shark, giant. I, I'm a. I love shark movies. Yeah. I pick up every single shark movie I can find. I don't. For some reason, I'm a. I love killer shark films. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. If it's <laughs> stupid, I'll still buy it. <laughs> See, I like this shark. One just looks insane. I like them, but I don't. I like shark movies a lot, actually. Jaws so far is still my favorite shark movie. Mm-hmm. hands down for obvious reasons, but, like, 
I tried to watch the Sharknado movies. I couldn't get into them. I tried so <laughs> hard. <so> bad. <laughs> and it's like, I don't mind watching a bad horror movie because sometimes a bad horror movie is fun. Mm-hmm. But these were just too, I just couldn't do it. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what? Because at first I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch every single one of these Sharknado movies. <laughs> and I think I watched like one and a half, one and a half. And I couldn't get, I just couldn't do it anymore, man. But I do enjoy the shark movies. I don't know if I'm going to go see the Meg movie. I might. I'm kind of on the fence about that. But I definitely want to see it. I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping it's good, but I have, I'm like in the middle with it. Mm -hmm. Nothing against Jason Statham, but usually when they have actors like that in the movie, you kind of know how it's going to go. He's going to end up being the hero at the end, blowing up the shark. And it's like, there's going to be a part in the movie where he's underwater or on something like a jet ski and the shark's about to attack him and he just he just somehow makes it. Oh yeah. But other than that, I do want to check that movie out. I really do. Um what about uh I'm just going to throw it out there. Halloween. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I'm I'm I think they need to leave the Halloween franchise alone and stop making them. Mm-hmm. Just, just the way it is. Okay, you go with Halloween 1, great film. Yes. Halloween 2, another great one. And, of course, you go up to the franchise, and it starts getting stupid around 4, 5. They're okay. 6 was awful. You go with H2O. H2O was good. I liked H2O. Me too. And then, of course, you end with Resurrection, and you're like, fuck this film. Honestly. And, of course... And then, of course, you have uh, Rob Zombie's ones. Okay, cool. You're bringing it back. It's different. You're going to have your, your haters. You're going to have your lovers. Mm-hmm. But, again, I don't know. Halloween, what are they calling it? Halloween something. Um, hang on. Let me see. Well, speaking on the Halloween movie, they're just calling it Halloween as far as I can. Oh, they call it? I thought they had, like, a stupid title to it. I mean, like, unless they're, they're releasing something, something later on. But all I see right now in front of me is Halloween. But speaking on the franchise as a whole, I honestly liked most of the movies. Up, Honestly, the only one I really don't like, as far as the older ones, I'll say, and part three, we're not even putting that as part of the Halloween franchise. <laughs> no. Is, uh, I did not like, um, what is it, Resurrection? Yeah. I didn't like that one. I liked all the other ones. I know the story was kind of jumpy, but I liked all the other ones. Honestly, I really did. A lot of people like, a lot of people like the original, and then as far as the sequels go, it kind of like dwindles down, which I do agree with that. They don't all like them, but I like the whole franchise. And then, uh, are they putting Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie again? Yes. And I, I killed her. And again, she could have lived. Who knows? They just what's let's drag it out some more. Well, what they're doing with this one? Well, before, hang on. Before I get to that, oh, yeah. and then this the, is the one that takes place between one and two, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, even. Not only that, but what they're doing with this, I'll say this before I jump into what I was going to say, is um, I guess two and on don't even exist. And they're changing it, so instead of those two being brother and sister, they're not even related, I guess. That's what I read last about it. I'm not sure how true that is or how accurate that is, but I guess they're not related. It's 40 years later, and um, I guess he's still, he's still trying to kill her, I guess. <laughs> And I guess that it's, makes no sense. I don't know. Like I don't know. I'm gonna uh, this movie. I do want to go see in theaters because only because it's one of the big three. It's you know Friday the Thirteenth. Right. I seen the last one they made in theaters. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I seen the last Friday or sorry Nightmare on Elm Street in theaters. I did too. Ugh. And I have to see this. The thing with the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, real quick. I didn't hate it. I liked. I enjoyed the story about it. I just didn't like the look of Freddy. That was my only issue. That was my biggest issue with the movie. I didn't like the look of Freddy. I hated the storyline. I hated how they switched Freddy's back character, his story around. Uh Uh-huh. Instead of making him a child murderer, they made him a child molester. That's true. "Uh, Don't do that. Ah, jeez. I didn't like the way he looked. He looked weird with his face half burned or, I don't know, he put shit on his face or something. My wife said said he kind of looked like, um... I don't know these Harry Potter movies at all, but something from Harry Potter, kind of, sort of. Uh, Voldemort, is that his name? Yeah. 
but yeah, he definitely had that look of that. He looked like he was part of a fish too, the way his face <laughs> pointed out and everything. It was it was rough. And it didn't have like I was so prepped because they did the scene like when the guy was in jail, they hung him. Okay, straight front and the, 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 when they did the first kill, mm-hmm. well, technically in the remake it was the second kill where they. Uh, the girl Amanda Weiss's character gets on the on the ceiling and on the walls, so I was excited and pumped for the Johnny Depp scene where he, the kid gets sucked through the bed yes. and the blood comes gushing out. I'm waiting for that scene so hard and it never happens. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? And you don't kill him too. He lives, and it. I was just so pissed. I'm like, this movie sucks. I look at my wife, and she goes, this movie is horrible. I go, yeah. Like, we both saw the Friday the 13th in the theater. We both liked the remake. Mm-hmm. But we both hate the, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. We'll sit there, and we're like, ugh. We even, to this day, we'll talk about it. Like, so the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, and she gives me a dirty look. I go, yep, still crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did not. We were not fans of it. Yeah, I, get, I, I understand that, though. But jumping into the house. We'll ho- probably go see Halloween. Yeah, I'm definitely going to see that. And then jumping back into that real quick, like the, um, like I said, I liked most of them up till uh, Resurrection I wasn't a fan of. And I, I honestly think I only seen Resurrection like once or twice, maybe. If I watched it the third time, it was on, no. Yeah, I so it three times tops, I think. I don't remember that movie too well. It's a good idea for Resurrection. <laughs> it's like the only good thing about that movie was how they brought him back. Mm-hmm. That was the only possible thing, because in each 2 all they decapitate him. Yep. And somehow he's great switched. ending. But all of a sudden, he's resurrected. Like, what, now he's a zombie? Like, for, like Jason is? Yeah. What the hell? Nope. Like, oh, this is how they did it. <laughs> Understandable. I like that. And then the movie flops. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Rob Zombie remake of the Halloween movies, the first one I thought was damn near... It was so good. I oh, really, I I really it. enjoyed it because I like. Not everybody. We saw that one too, I think. I didn't. Did I see that? No, I don't think I seen that in theaters. I don't remember. Oh, shit, I don't know if I seen the second one in theaters either. But anyway, like I like how they went to his childhood, so you kind of got a better idea. Not that it's a great reason, because it's not, but why he was the way he was. Like I always throw out when I talk about this movie, I like the part how. Um, Remember when he's talking to Loomis when he's in the prison or whatever? And he's like, he keeps asking him if he can see his family. And then he's like, you know what? If I can't see my family, I'm not going to talk. And he'd like never talk from then on. Right. I really enjoyed that part. And I like the part two when he was a kid where he beat the piss out of the bully. Just about to say that when he was getting bullied <laughs> every day. And he's killing like the mice and rats. That kind of showed you something. The rats that he had that showed you a little something by he was, you know, it's like right. something's off with this kid. But, yeah, when he was getting bullied and he followed the dude home wearing the little clown mask, he followed the dude into the woods and beat the shit out of him with that branch and killed him. Yep. I thought that was cool. I like that. And then you go from there, you know, when he goes, his sister doesn't take him trick-or-treat and he goes to the house. Or she doesn't take him out long or something. I forgot what it was. Because he does end up having candy. I remember him flicking the candy corn in the kitchen. Right, because his mother was out dancing. He killed the father in the chair. The stepdad, which I love that fucking kill. He deserved that, that shit. I hated that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm glad he died. And, of course, he goes up and stabs his sister with lips because that's the whole clown thing. Because she wanted to go out to a party or something. and But he taped the stepdad up and killed him. That was great. And, and I think mom was out dancing at the yep. club or something. She, she was out stripping. He killed, yes. he killed the sister. And then he um, he killed her boyfriend too. Remember, because he hit him in the head. Because he goes downstairs to make a sandwich. That's right. And he hits him in the head with the bat or whatever. And you see his body shaking. And he keeps beating him. It doesn't show him beating him, but it shows him like swinging the bat up and down, similar mm-hmm. to the kill when he killed the kid. The you know the teenage bully. And then um, he goes outside with his little baby sister, and his mother comes home. She's crying or whatever. Obviously, the police come. He gets taken away, and eventually, his mother kills herself. Yep. And, like, one part that I thought was kind of, like, I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it is when um, with Danny Trejo. Because he was taking oh, care of him. Oh, the gender or the, uh, the orderly? Yeah. He was taking care of him throughout a lot of the movie. 
And then Michael ends up killing him. I'm like, I feel like he should have let him survive. A little yeah. part of me was like, because this dude was the one dude he never messed with you, never bullied you, never picked on you, didn't mess with your masks, didn't touch your shit. He was always nice to you. And I felt like, you know, maybe the little bit of human was left in him to let him survive. Yeah. But I got why he killed him. I, it's like in the middle with that one. Yep. It just shows him just going to complete murder mode and that's it. Yeah, which I did like the whole murder mode where he killed like the whole police station pretty much. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you seen all the dead bodies around. Yep. So that, yeah, but that, I do want to see the movie. I hope that, I really hope they don't fuck it up, though, man. I'm going to be so mad if I go in there and spend my, yep, spend my money to go see this and it's a bad movie. Because it's, it's one of these movies that it's like a classic. And I'm one of these, I don't know if it's rare or not, but a lot of people hate remakes. I love remakes, but I love remakes if they're done right. Or see, even if it's a late sequel, I don't know what the hell you would call this. Reboot, remake, sequel, whatever. But when they come in and they uh, fuck it up, it's like, why did you even do this? Just just stick to the classics. Yep. Like with the, you, don't, um, you don't need to make it in between a certain film. No. It kind of ruins it because it's been how many years now? Like if they did it back in the 80s where they first did the movie, mm-hmm. okay, I understandable. Here's part two. Followed by, okay, let's skip Season of the Witch. Let's do three as a real Michael Myers or whatnot. But now they're doing it. I don't know, it's been 40 years later now. Jamie mm-hmm. Lee Curtis is not young anymore. She can't play the same character again. So she, what's she going to do? Is she going to play like an old lady sitting in a chair saying, <laughs> this is the story of how I was stalked by your Uncle Michael back in the day of 1980-whatever. She's sitting in a rocking chair and she pulls out the book and starts talking to these kids. I'm like, Ugh, let's hope not. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know, I'm on the fence of it. I'll definitely go because, again, it is one of the top horror franchises out there. Mm -hmm. But, again, I'm afraid they're going to ruin it. But, again, it could be wrong. Now, um, jumping into the Friday the 13th remake, which I did a whole countdown on that. I'm not sure if you got a chance to listen to it on the podcast or not. But uh, I forgot where I mentioned that on my list. That movie, my main thing, I mean, acting wasn't great in that movie. But one big, big Big, huge issue I had with that movie was uh, that they did it, like, around... You know, they did it in this era. I feel like they that movie would have been a million times better if they did it stuck with the 80s era. Mm-hmm. And just kind of... You know what I mean? I feel like it would have done better. It would have just been so much better. This, everything would have been better about it. They stuck with it in that era and did, like, the whole reboot or remake, whatever you want to call it, and maybe just did... The original, you know, they did the original with his mother being the killer. Mm-hmm. Maybe did that, and maybe made three, maybe made three or four movies out of it instead of doing. Because in the one, it was like part one, two, and three all mixed. Because part one, his mother's the killer. Yep. Part two, he's got the potato sack. And part three is when he gets his mask. And it's like they did that all in the one, which it kind of worked. But if or if they would have made it more where his mother was a killer for the majority of the movie. And that's, you know, all right, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I got actually, it. I didn't, actually, I didn't mind the remake. I actually liked it. Oh, I, I, I liked how they did it at this time around, too. It's, it's more modern. And um, the combination of the first three movies, I thought, okay, let's see how they do. They, they started off the whole uh, Evangel getting murdered there and Jason mm-hmm. coming back. I'm like, okay, he's got the potato sack. They said kept that, and then they went right to the mask. I'm like, okay. You got some good kills. You got that good eeriness. Like when he shoots the one kid in the head with the, the crossbow. <laughs> well, right in the boat. Yes. And the girl's underneath the dock. Just the, the machete just coming down. <laughs> picking her up out of the water. You get the tit shot. And then boom, back in the water. That was, I'm like, that's cool. I like that. Oh, the kills. Know, the kills in this movie were freaking excellent. The kill, yes. I like I like the... um. I know they didn't fin- they didn't show it show, but remember when the one kid got caught in the bear trap and then you see Jason running and he had his machete up, but it didn't show him like kill him. That's right. when the movie like went to the credit, you know, it went to the beginning credits and all that. And I like the uh, the sleeping bag kill where you had the her oh, hung up, up upside cooked. down. Yeah, that was cool. That was fucking awesome. The kills were great, and I loved how Jason was a lot smarter in this. Like he knew the camp, he had all these traps, 
He had the thing, like you're around tunnels. Yes, the tunnels, because you're always wondering, like, how the hell is he getting here everywhere so fast? And that made the movie make sense. He had emotion, like he showed anger. I liked that, but I just wish it was in the older era. I think that would have made it better for me, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And just like, uh, I don't know. That's that's like a big thing right there with me, the older era. And just, I don't know. The acting was. It was subpar. Maybe a little bit better acting, but, I mean, it's a slasher film. You don't need the greatest acting in a slasher film or a horror film, really. Because, <laughs> like, I, you know what it is, too, with, with these kind of movies, now that I think about it? You don't want that great of acting because you really don't want to get attached to a character because you, me personally, I want to see Jason get everybody. Mm-hmm. So you really don't want to see a survivor. You're not mad if there is a survivor, but you don't want to get attached to that one character like, oh, man, I want this person to survive because of da-da-da-da-da, and then boom, they're killed. You're like, fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn. There goes that one. All right. Yep. But it was overall, I really, like I said, I really enjoyed the movie. I actually wouldn't mind doing a podcast. Like, I did one on the whole franchise as far as, like, favorite to least favorite. I wouldn't mind doing one, one movie per episode. You know what I mean? That would be cool. That would be real cool. I know... A friend of mine named Scott wants to do um, Jason Takes Manhattan. He said that was his favorite one out of the franchise, which would be fun to really? do. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I want to. That is I, interesting. I don't know why. I want to hear his take on it, but I will say one thing. That's one of the ones that I've probably seen the most growing up because back in the day on the USA Network, Friday the 13th, that was one of the main ones I freaking played. Like, because I remember Friday the 13th, it would play from Friday the 13th till throughout the, actually that whole weekend, it would just play Jason films. I mean, that's all it would play over and over and over. And that was like one of the main ones. I seen that one, that one a lot. I seen part three a lot just from watching it on TV. And, uh, damn, what other ones? Seven. I think it was like the main three I seen. I know I've seen more. I just can't think of the ones off the top. I had I own the movies now, but I'm saying as far as like, you know, once they show it on TV the most that you just turn it on, boom, that one's on. So you got anything else horror related you want to talk about? Uh let's see. Another one I can't wait to watch in the theater is uh Jurassic World. Yes. The second one coming out. Yes. Now I had another, one of my friends, him and I argue that Jurassic Park he argues that it's not a horror film. I argue that it, it is. He's like, oh, it's all action. It's all action. I'm like, it's dinosaurs eating people. It's dinosaurs being evolved into modern day. That's fucking scary. Scary ain't <laughs> even the word. Ah, uh, but I, I remember seeing Lost World in the theater with my wife, and we're sitting there, and I freaking went ballistic when that dino shark ate the one girl that was being attacked by the pterodactyls. Mm-hmm. I was clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts looking at me I'm like, yes, that's awesome. My wife is laughing because the way I'm acting, but I didn't care. I loved it. Oh, so when I saw the trailer, multiple trailers for the second one, I can't wait. That's awesome. This thing looks insane. That's fucking. They're bringing awesome. back a lot of the same characters. They even bringing back uh, Jeff Goldblum again I from seen the that. first two. Oh, there's a, a trailer scene where the people are are uh, surfing. And there's that freaking dino shark underneath the wave coming towards the surfer. And I'm like, oh, they're bringing back the Daqua shark. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I oh, want to wait. That movie. Yes. That movie. I do want to see. I believe my wife and I went and seen that in theaters. The first one. And we even went and seen um, the original. They had yeah, I play- saw the original too when I was little. Oh, no. My brother and nephews. This was uh, this was more. Re- this was a couple of years ago. I think it was before Jurassic World came out. Okay. And they had like a. um. They had it at Crossgates, and it was free. Actually, I was at Walmart one day, and they were, like, giving out these tickets or whatever to go see the movie free. It was, like, one and a guest, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, I think it was, like, a 9 or 10 o'clock showing. It was, like, first come, first serve, pretty much. And it was 3D. Nice. So it was cool to see the original movie in 3D and see it. It was it was pretty cool to see that. And yeah, we did see Jurassic World. She loves I like the movies a lot too. She loves the freaking Jurassic Park movies. Like we own all of them. She'll I can go downstairs right now and say, let's watch let's go through the whole Jurassic Park series the rest of the weekend. She'll okay, let's go. 
<laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to that movie. When is that? That's coming out probably this summer, right? Yep. That'll I think it's yeah, July. July. That'll be a good one. That'll be a good watch right there. And um, I saw. I remember my brother took me and my nephews to go see the original Jurassic Park back nice. in the '90s. I loved the the intro theme song. The do 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 like that whole song yes. just stuck with me. And I loved it. And the part where the in the beginning there they have the dino egg and the little raptor's starting to open it up and the guy's touching it, then now know where you hear like a Velociraptor scream. Mm-hmm. That made me jump as a kid. I'm like, oh <laughs> <laughs> And then of course I saw the dinosaurs on screen, the giant T Rex. I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I freaking love the Jurassic Parks ever since. Yeah, that, those were good. And you know what it is, too, is, like, as kids, and I feel like all kids, especially, like, in our era of growing up, as kids, um, you love dinosaurs. You want oh, yeah. anything about a dinosaur, you want to see it, you want to hear it, you want to go to the museum, you want to see the movie, the book, whatever it was. You wanted to see a damn dinosaur. Mm-hmm. And they showed you some damn dinosaurs in that freaking movie. Yes, they did. You're like, wow. And they looked real, too. They're not fake CGI or oh, whatnot. They actually looked legit. They did. You're they like, wow. did an excellent freaking job with that. And now... Like, I have the, I have the Carnosaur movies. I don't know if you've ever seen Carnosaur. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's like a ripoff of the Jurassic Park, but it takes place in, like, a small town where this mad scientist is working with uh, dino DNA and human DNA where... Humans are giving birth to dinosaurs. Wow. <laughs> and uh, it's weird, but the dinosaurs didn't look that bad. They're all stop animation or robotics, and it looked all right. The storylines were pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Um, What was I going to say? Did you? I can't remember if I asked you this on the last episode or not, but did you see um, Hellraiser Judgment Day? I, I have it, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh. I heard it's real bad. It's. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <clears throat> did you see the Jeep- Jeepers Creepers 3 movie? Yes, I did. What did you think of that? I didn't like it. Me either. Again, I watched it on Sci Fi Channel, so it's edited. So I'm like, uh, I, I did buy it. I may watch it on Blu ray to see if there's any difference between an edited version and a non edited version. Because when it's made for TV, they have to cut out certain scenes, of course. Yep. Now, so would they put them back in? I don't know. I watched the. Well. I seen the movie unedited, and okay. um, I was very disappointed. Yeah. Like, I I love his truck. Some of the kills were pretty cool. Like, I like some of the stuff like that, but it was just there wasn't enough with this movie. I felt like it was just a rush. I oh, felt like it was like a rushed, rushed. product, and. It was during the like the first two was there a lot of the movie was nighttime. This movie mm-hmm. was during the day through the whole freaking movie. I'm like, what the what why? <laughs> now right. you've seen the movie, so do you remember the part where the thing the Jeepers Creepers guy, whatever, I don't know what the hell you call him. The creeper. Yeah. That's what they call him. The creeper. Remember where he flipped the truck over? Yep. How the hell did that kid get that truck home? Driving it home. <laughs> So I don't know. It just it just randomly goes. Oh, let's make like, him drive the truck again. It's like is it? I mean, I'm thinking like, what is this kid's fucking Superman? Could he just flip it? If he could have flipped the truck back <laughs> over, he should have fought the damn monster. Like, how the hell do you just drive the shit home? That no. <laughs> and also too, the truck had this weird spear in the exhaust pipe. Mm-hmm. It just kept going and going. Like, where the hell is this thing being stored in the truck? Yes. It just kept going until it speared the guy. I'm like. What? It's like looped in the truck somehow. It doesn't make sense. It, I did like the track, the the trap, uh, claw mouth or whatever is in the truck. Uh huh. The one that kind of had teeth. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was cool, but all the rest of it just it just fell flat for me. Um, I agree. I just it's another one of those movies that I felt like they wanted to get it out there. They're like, you know what, horror is doing really, really good from last year on. It's really coming back. The genre is really getting popular. Just throw something out there, and I felt like. You should have held back, took your time with it, really thought it out, and just... You could have did another movie. I'm not saying they couldn't do another movie. But just... I don't know. Don't rush. 
just it's and, and also too it's also Victor Salva. A lot of people don't want to work with him because he's yeah. a convicted pedophile. That's true too. That's no one very wants true. to get into it, so they're trying to get. So he's probably just rushing to get certain things done because of who he is. And unfortunately, I think they're working on a part four the oh, way part three ended. Shit. And the ending for part three sucked. I I don't even remember how it ended. <laughs> the creeper was like in the uh, like the the field or something. He finds a note saying, "I know who you are. I know what you are." And he's just there screaming from the girl, and that's it. Uh, it's like, it's like, what the hell? They don't even fight him. They don't do anything with him. I'm going to watch it, though. Unfortunately, I'm going to watch it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to revisit the trilogy. Like, I love Part 2. Part 2 is my favorite out of the, uh, the Jeepers Creepers movies. Me too. And you know, it's, Part 2 is like the most popular one. That's another movie where you <laughs> throw it on the USA Network or whatever during Halloween. And, or the Sci-Fi Channel, maybe even. And you see that movie, you see part two on way more than you see part one. Mm-hmm. The whole bus thing and all that. That was I, Part one and part two were good. I liked part two better, though. Same. But I'm scrolling through. I'm on over here on the Googles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a movie. I guess it came out in January, so I'm going to have to look this up. It's called Summer of 84. I don't know what that is. I saw the picture of it. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Like the the um movie poster, it says every serial killer lives next door to someone. It shows like a milk carton missing, and it shows like a a face, but it's like a skull kind of face. Yep. And um, read a quick synopsis, I guess. After suspecting that their police officer neighbor is a serial killer, a group of teen teenage friends spend their summer spying on him and gathering evidence. But as they get closer to discovering the truth, things get dangerous. This kind of sounds interesting, and I think I'm going to have to watch this movie. <laughs> it might be one of those things where, like, the synapses sound so great. The movie poster looks so great and promising. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, oh, my God, I spent an hour and a half to two hours watching this shit. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also, I don't think it's released yet, too. Not I think yet. it was made in January. Okay. And it might be coming out. Supposed to be. Uh, it's an hour and forty five minutes. Hmm. But um, I'm gonna have to check that movie. I'm gonna have to look into that more. But I'm definitely gonna. I, I definitely want to check that out because obviously it sounds like it's gonna be a slasher film, which I love, and Summer of '84, so it's gonna be like an '80s based slasher film, which I also love. Not saying that they couldn't do a slasher for nowadays. But there's just something about, like, the 80s feel to movies that just, it works Mm -hmm. so well if they do it well. But, again, I would actually love to see a great slasher film nowadays, too. You know? Like, that would be kind of cool. I think you're going to really like Lost After Dark. I mean, we're definitely doing that. As a matter of fact, we should probably do that one next. Or no. Yeah. I think you'll really like it. It does take place in the 80s. It's a newer slasher, but it's it takes place in the past. Okay. Robert Patrick. Oh my God! I finally got his name. <laughs> You've thinking about that for a while. I was. It just also just pat, come up to me. It's uh, the guy that played the T one thousand in RoboCop, uh, Terminator two. There, he plays the principal in this. And, okay. Uh, bunch of kids steal a bus. They don't want to be at the party. They find this abandoned barn they want to party at, and all shit goes crazy. It's Oh, I was blown away how good that one was. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm really good hype on hearing about this house that Jack built. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing how gory it is and how insanely crazy it is. I don't know if it's going to be any good. It's this supposed to be a new... Uh, it's got Matt Dillon in it, but then again... Uh, it's supposed to be a, it's another psychological horror film that's coming out. That's interesting. That's interesting. I just... You know, one thing I do like now is ever since the success of it from last summer, mm-hmm. they're really, I mean, they've been, I can't even put it just on that. Like with the conjuring movies, um, sinister insidious, they're really like bringing horror back. Finally, giving it the respect that it des- deserves. And one thing I want to see, which again, they did it with it, but I want to see it with more horror movies is some really, really, really good R rated horror movies. Yeah, they got to stop making this PG-13 crap. 
if they cut it, they always make a good film. Like it's all of a sudden, you're like, oh, this is gonna look great, and then they give you the rating PG-13. You're like, oh, it's gonna be oh, toned down. Yep. They're not gonna have a lot of good scenes in it because they're gonna have to cut it out. Like, mm-hmm. It's like, come on, if you want to make it horror, you want to make it good. Not horror movies that are R. Mm-hmm. Are great. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. There are some good PG-13 horror films out there. Oh, definitely. But stop, but stop relying on jump scares. Stop relying on the thing in the in the dark or the thing that's there. Okay, we we get that already. We it's dime a dozen. Come on, give us a good R-rated flick. Like Stephen King said, that was fantastic. I think that was rated R. Yeah, that one was. It had it, to be. It was, and it was good. It was great. It it made a huge box office. It it put horror back up there pretty much. It was making a ton of money. People were going to go see that constantly. And they can't wait for the second one. Like, if you put out a good slasher film that takes place, it doesn't even have to be a good decade or whatnot. Just a good slasher that's in, that's an R-rated film while in the theater, I bet you're going to bring a lot of people to it. You make it, you kind of make it somewhat cheesy, but you also make it somewhat serious. The way, like, Scream did. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the 90s, the horror was going downhill pretty much. It was kind of a meh, meh, meh. When Scream hit, it hit the theaters. People went to go see it. And they loved it. And that's what rekindled the whole horror horror movies in the 90s was Scream. They so brought true. out other slashers and whatnot. It's like, holy crap, now we're having more slashers. We're having more interesting films. The whole brought the whole, my buddies and I call it the, the faces on the cover. Cause mm-hmm. That's what Scream did. We had the, the pit killer or you have a bunch of people's faces on the cover and that's it. So true. So, so, so bring us like a new age horror film, like a whole new age slasher or something on the big screen. I know they were trying to do it with a uh, quiet place or with uh, some other films that were in, in the theater, I think. But I mean, you, you want to drag me in. You want to pull me into the theater. That's yes. what you want to do. Yes. I, I couldn't have said it better, man. It's just. And like I said, again, I love the remakes. Like, I, I'm still waiting for them to do another Friday the 13th just because I love it. But I would really like them to do, like, a brand new slasher that hasn't been. I know it's hard because they've done so many slashers, but just a brand new slasher. And um, I'll say this, actually, with the Terrifier movie. Did you see that? Yep. That right there. If they can branch off with that right there, give it a bigger budget. I think they can do some big things with that. Like that can be the new face of slashers for this mm-hmm. for this uh, era, in my opinion. Because I just I love honestly, that's probably my favorite freaking clown right now. I oh, love really the, wow. Yeah, just just because like the the craziness of it. Like I guess you can say mime slash clown, but just like the craziness of it and just the gore, the violence. He just didn't really care and. One part that I really liked, I mean, there's a few parts. I like, I love the upside down kill, the saw. That was probably one of my favorite kills of all time. Maybe not my favorite, but one of my favorites. And I liked, remember when he shot the girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she was getting the better of him. And he like had, that was like his last resort. A lot of people, like I was seeing it in other horror groups, a lot of people didn't like it, but I actually really loved it because I was like, he'll do anything to get his kill. And he didn't seem satisfied with that kill. And even with that kill, he abused her because he was like, shooting her a bunch of times before he actually did the death kill with the shot. Yep. But um, I think that they could really, really do something amazing with this because there wasn't much of a... There wasn't any story to this movie at all. They could do one with more of a story to it. And I feel like it make it... Like, this can be the one new franchise, horror slasher franchise, that can make some noise. And it's just up to, what is it, the FCC or whatever the hell they are. They have to edit the film. It's like with, when Rob Zombie wanted to release House of a Thousand Corpses, they had to make him edit it like eight times to actually get that R rating. Wow. Like he had, to, he had to tone it down so many different ways. Like I would love to see maybe a director's cut where he had everything into it. Mm-hmm. Like it's all hardcore, boom, it's all in your face, here you go. Not, okay, let's tone this down a little bit, let's tone that. It's like give us something that would make us go, oh my God. I agree. Or, wow. Or something to actually get us gorehounds excited. I agree with that. I by going with Terrify was great. That's why I love some of these independent film companies. Some of these independent movies, they could do whatever the fuck they want because it's their film. 
there are some films out there that are so fucking gory. You're like, wow, this makes this movie makes me want to go, holy shit. <laughs> but they could do it. But again, they're not rated by the I think I think it's the FCC or whatever, whoever decides to edit films. But again, I'd love to see more more goodness. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. Did you ever see the movie Mayhem? I did not. Oh, um, have you seen the Belco experiment? Another. <laughs> okay. Those two, I thought, were really well done. It's it, They're not slashers or anything, but it's <clears throat> like, let's see. The Belco was the bunch of people in South America. They have a, like a, a the place called Belco, which was a, a office building mm-hmm. <clears throat> out of nowhere. The PA goes, all right, the building's now in lockdown. You have someone has to die within a certain amount of minutes. Wow. If no one gets killed, you have explosives in the back of your head, neck. One of them will get, will be activated. You don't know who. And of course, something happens and they said, okay, now five people have to die or 25. <clears throat> it makes the whole people go crazy on themselves. Fantastic. I freaking love the Belco. <clears throat> Mayhem is similar, but it's a disease that somehow got into the air vents that made people all go freaking batshit crazy either you want to kill people you want to fuck people you don't want to kill and fuck them whatever you want to do <laughs> and they have eight hours before the inoculation occurs mm-hmm. and this one guy who just got fired wants to go after the big boss so he has eight hours to get to the top to get to the boss to get his revenge it was fantastic so those two are definitely a must check out i'm gonna have to check those out too oh man they're great now, belco was in the theater I think Mayhem was too, but I wanted to wait because I heard some hype on them and I heard low. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I'll wait till I'll just buy it. And I freaking love them both. Great back to back. That's awesome, man. Um, I wouldn't mind. Like, I know I, Slasher, like I said, is definitely my number one favorite hands down type of horror movie, but I wouldn't mind seeing a good, like, yeah, actually, you know what? Before I even say that, you know what movie I'd like to see make a third one? I'm not sure if they're not. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if they're gonna or not. Is Sinister? I really enjoyed the first two of those movies because you got kind of like the mind thing, but you also had the slasher thing too. It was it was crazy, and I want that freaking. I saw mask. the first one. I didn't see the second one. I put it as I, I, the second one. I gotta take a look. I highly recommend watching the second one. All right, definitely. Let's see if I own it. <laughs> I know I own the first one. I actually I seen both of those movies in the theaters and I love them both and that's honestly it's it's up there with one of my favorite like I can't choose a favorite horror movie you know it's too hard because there's so many different ones and it changes with the mood like my favorite slasher franchise is Friday the Thirteenth but I can't choose like a favorite horror movie. Uh, it's hard. Like my f- top two always they always fight each other <clears throat> to be the number one mm-hmm. and that's the John Carpenter's The Thing remake. Mm-hmm. and the Blob remake from the 1980s. Those two are my top two favorite. I'll probably say The Thing will probably be my number one, and The Blob be number two. I don't know. Those two scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Loved them now. I still watch them. I'll get bored. I'll throw one of them in, and just they're just so much fun. Like uh, during the, this winter storms we had this year, my wife's like, let's watch a winter movie, like just a winter horror film. I'm like, did you see The Thing prequel? It's like, there's a prequel? Like, yep, <laughs> pop it in. <laughs> she liked it, and I did. And, of course, right after that, we watched John Carpenter's one. And uh, we both love watching those. Yeah, that's – I'm looking at a list now. I just typed in top ten. Well, this is the, it says the best 15 slasher movies. All right. So I'm just going to read it down. Now, I'm sure I haven't seen all of these. And I'm sure the ones I do see, I probably have, don't remember all of them. But number 15, I Know What You Did Last Summer. It came out in 1997. It's all right. I like it, but it's not bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where the, um, I'm trying to refresh The fisherman name. with the hook. Yes, and they threw him in the water. Yep. Okay, okay. Next one, number 14. This one came out in 2004. It's called Santa's Little Helper. I've never oh. seen or heard of it. But I have it. It's it's not really a slasher. It's a it's a crazy guy wearing a mask, but he's killing everybody. And it's just the weird how this 
people reacted to this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't want to put it in the slasher drama, but okay. It's good, though. It's fucked up. I'm going to have to check that out. I might have to keep, <laughs> like put this list up. I might have to tag this list into this, com- to this episode. Um, the Toolbox mur- or Sorry, Toolbox Murders. Original or remake? It's from 03. That's the remake. So, have you seen that? I see. Which one? I have... Which one do I own? I own, I own the original. Okay. Toby Hooper did the remake, and the remake wasn't that good. No, it's the sequel. Part two wasn't good at all. But, eh, it's different. All right. You ready, you ready for the next one? Let's do the next one. Stage Fright. This is from 1987. Great film. Great film. Love that stage. I love Stage Fright. Oh, man. So it's an Italian slasher. Oh, my God. It's good. <laughs> I got shit. I got to get, I gotta, I gotta get on my game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could give you a list <laughs> of slashers. You're going to you're gonna have to email them to me or something. Go over oh, it. I'll, I'll hook you up, brother. <laughs> and we'll go through. We'll just start knocking out. I'll talk to you. I got an idea. I'll talk to you about it after this episode, actually. All right. The next one, though, is um, which is number 11 from 2007, which I did see. I did enjoy, even though it was kind of a cheesy horror, but Hatchet. I love the Hatchet movies. I seen all, I own all four of them. I got to, got to see part four during the, uh, the secret screening oh, day wow. in uh, Syracuse. Awesome. Awesome. My, I wife, my wife never saw any of them, so I took her to see part four. She loved it. She's like, this movie's awesome. I go, you got to see the rest. And she's laughing. You seen you seen the hatch one, right? I seen the first. I believe I seen the first two. Oh, you gotta see the rest. But in the first one, the the scene where he takes the guy and the girl and rips her mouth wide open, mm-hmm. I knew that scene was gonna make my wife start laughing. And of course, she was giggling up a storm. That's <laughs> awesome. Hatchets are great. Love them. And played by the great Kane Hodder. Mm-hmm. Al, okay, number ten. Alice, Sweet Alice from 1976. Also known as Communion. It's a weird slasher. It's a, it's a religious slasher. Okay. Uh, about a girl, two girls, uh, I think they were sisters, going to get Communion. Uh, one of them gets killed, and uh, it's like a whole weird setup. There's like this fat-ass uh, guy in a, an apartment, disgusting, picking on girls. But the killer outfit was pretty new. It's got a range slicker with a weird clear mask. But it was a good slasher. I have it. I probably have most of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it sure does sound like it. But uh, like I said, we'll, I'll discuss it after, but you're going to have to send me mm-hmm. a list. Okay, number nine, Child's Play from 88, the original Child's right. Play, mm-hmm. which was great. I, I got to see it again. I haven't seen it in so long, but the first two, I believe, were excellent. I like the first three. The first three are great. First, now which one's the one where, with the um, where they went to the army or whatever the army thing? The military school was part three. Okay, I did enjoy that one too. Then, Ford started bringing in the bride, which was okay. Bride was good. Seed sucked, uh, and then Curse of Chucky was kind of good, but it was also bad at the same time because they started changing things around. Mm-hmm. But what do you think of the, that? Was that the last, or was that Colt? Because there was Colt and Curse. Oh, wait. Let's see. Seed. Which one was Curse? I don't oh, remember I Curse. I, oh, wait. I, I remember Curse now. That was, that was okay. Yeah. But Cult wasn't that. I like Cult, but. You didn't like it. They, they changed things around, which I didn't like. Understandable. With all the, with all the Chuckies running around? See, okay. Well, I want to discuss this a little bit before I go to the next movie. <laughs> I actually like like where he possessed the other dolls and where he possessed the people. I like that. I wish what they would have done in that one though is remember the guy that had like multiple personalities or whatever. Yeah. I wish Chucky, seeing as how you knew he could do that, I wish Chucky would have took him over. And he had the like, thing is though with with Chucky though he transferred his soul into the doll. Mm-hmm. It's only one soul. How is he transferring all these other souls into these other dolls? To make more Chuckies, you Good only question. have one soul. That's true. That so is... how is he doing this? It just, to me, it just didn't make sense. Like, a couple cool kills, but again, I was like, eh, okay, uh, 
let's see how they tie it up in the, the next one. If they do. <laughs> yeah, if they do. Okay, next one is, um, and it's another classic, A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Yep, that's a classic. That's, it's, okay. Number seven. <laughs> We, we really don't need to say too much about that no, one. No, <laughs> we don't see anything about that at all. I mean, the franchise did start to go on a decline for a little bit, but... They're happens. fun to watch. They are. They definitely are. Alone in the... This is movies from 1982. It's called Alone in the Dark. Have you seen alone. that one? Alone in the Dark. Do I have that one? Alone, alone. I gotta look up the picture. Because I gotta... If I see the picture, I know... Alone in the Dark. By the way, guys, Matt has, I'm just, we're Skyping right now to record, and I see a shit ton of movies behind him, and it's not even, like, all of his movies. This guy has a lot of freaking <laughs> horror movies. He's a... I'm a collector. Yes, he is. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of mine now, and it's just, he's going to be on this uh, this uh, podcast a lot, along with a few other voices you've heard on here. But holy I... shit. I know this movie, but I don't. I never seen it. This one's out of print and hard to find. Okay. So I saw the picture. I'm going. Oh yeah, this is the one where they're stuck in the home. Okay. Okay, number six, Evil Dead Trap. Oh, that's a good one. I just got the second one. It's an Asian film. Yeah. Yes, I was just about to say it says Japanese horror, and those yes. are always crazy. So I, you're probably saying I should watch this one too, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like a serial killer, these reporters are going in to find the serial killer. And, of course, they're being stalked by this crazed person. It's really weird, but really good. All right. Number five, Final Destination from 2003. The original, or sorry, from 2000. I don't know why I said 2003, but the original Final Destination. Not a slasher, but okay. No, it really isn't. Nope. Actually, it's not a no. It's I enjoyed the movie, but it's, you're right. I love the movies, but I don't think I don't consider it a slasher at all. Okay, next one, number four, Friday the Thirteenth, Jason Lives. That's part six. Yeah, that's part six. Yep. Wow, they had that one that high. Wow. Okay. It's good, <laughs> but I don't think it's like top of the line. But okay. Next one is Black Christmas from 1974. Understandable. It's a good one. It's a classic. I guess I got to see that one, too. <laughs> You've never seen Black Christmas? No, I haven't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> there are a bunch of girls stuck in a college dorm, like it's a house during Christmas time. And of course, there's a killer who, who is in the house stalking them one at a time. Mm -hmm. Great film. Great um, scenery. Like It's got that very creepiness to it. They did a remake in 2000 and something, I forgot, called just called Black Xmas. Uh, the remake was all right. I didn't mind it. I saw it in a the theater. It was good. But the original, nothing could beat it. All right. Number two, which me personally, I think this is way too high on this list, but uh, Scream, the original Scream from 1996. Yeah, it's too high, but okay. And number one is Halloween. The original Halloween from 78. Wow, they're missing some good slashers on this list. But that's just, you know, I had to, I just had to add something to it. Now, we can agree, we don't agree with this list. <laughs> we can definitely agree on that. Right. Like, I can't, even, I can't even think of a top 15, but, um, yeah, man, I do want to, I, I have some ideas, and, uh, I mean, uh, do you have anything else you want to add to this before we end it off, or you pretty good? Pretty good, but there's a slasher that, that should have been on the list. should have been called Intruder from the mm -hmm. 1980s. It's a slasher in a supermarket. That's very interesting. It's fucking awesome. I freaking, it's like one of my top slashers of non-franchise non slashers. Mm -hmm. It's like my number one or number two. Uh, oh. Ted and San Raimi uh, did it. And uh, it's got a cameo of uh, Bruce Campbell, but he doesn't. He takes place in the end, but it, it all takes place in a, in a supermarket. They're finding the supermarket's getting closed for good. 
So you got all the stock boys, the cashiers, and everything, getting everything put away. And someone's taking them out one at a time. Some great nice. kills. Oh, there's a scene with a power drill and a circular saw and all kinds of goodness. Nice. Fucking awesome. I should have made the list, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. But I don't know. Oh, spe- it, oh go ahead. I say speaking of that um what was it? A oh, stage fright. There's another one. It's uh it's called Stage Fright, it's two. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a musical slasher. It's a musical, but it's a slasher. Wow. That's it's actually it's really good. It's got meatloaf in it. They're uh, at a summer camp for uh, performing arts, for singing, this design, uh, all different kinds. <clears throat> and someone's wearing this weird kabuki type outfit. And when he sings, it's all like heavy metal guitars and all that shit. Mm-hmm. I was actually blown away how good this was. I'm like, wow, a musical slasher. And it works for what it is. It's also called Stage Fright. That's interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I recommend that one big time, too. You're going to have to just email me a list of a couple movies, and I'll knock them <laughs> out, and then we'll just... All right, I'll give you a list. <laughs> I'll knock them out, and we'll just do you know do a podcast or two or whatever. Maybe we'll do two for one. I'll discuss that after this episode's over, though. Oh, yeah. But uh, I pretty much... I'm, I'm good, though, man. How about yourself? You got anything else you want to... No, I'm pretty good. Okay. Well, on that note, you want to plug your stuff again, your pages? Sure. Again, if you haven't, please check out on YouTube called You and Your Horror Movies. It's my uh, channel where I do movie reviews, showing off collection, updates, collectibles, all that fun shit. And also, too, I'm also part of another podcast called Cinema Attack, where we discuss all different types of cinema, mostly a lot of horror, but... We talk about other films as well, where we talked about Mortal Kombat last, the two movies. And again, this time we're doing three slashers. If you haven't heard before, the three, the three slashers are Fender Bender, um, Blood Widow, and uh, so shit, um, Sleepover Nightmare. They're all from the late 2000s. That's what the show's all about. Nice. All good slashers, too. <laughs> all right, man. Well... Again, everybody, thank you for listening. Again, Again, check out. Thank you for having me on the show. Anytime. Anytime, man. You're always always welcome. So thank you for coming on the show again. I appreciate that. This is great. I love doing this. Everybody, thanks for listening. Check us both out, Horror with Sir Sturdy on Facebook. Check his pages out, like he said, his YouTube and his, um, his other podcast. Good podcast, really great podcast. And if you have any horror movie recommendations, go to the Horror Research Story Group and ask Matt because he has a shit ton. <laughs> and on you that, want to see pictures? I'll gladly post pictures boom. in my collection. There you go. <laughs> and on that note, I'll see you in your nightmares. <laughs> <laughs>